Hello once again everybody, it's uh, Ben from Adrama Day back for another one and um, here is another sample bottle that you will probably recognise if you saw the last whisky or a couple of whiskies before that or most of the whiskies during the Adrama Day run um, because this was donated very kindly again by Andrew A.P. Butler. So thank you again Andrew um, and I'm quite looking forward to this because I am a bit of a fan of Canadian whiskies, of which this is one and I have not had it before. Um, so this is a Stork and Barrel, uh, this is their blue blend or blue label if you want to call it, um, uh, from the Stillwaters Distillery. So before I crack this open and see what it actually tastes like, let's find out a little bit more about the distillery itself. Stork and Barrel is produced at the Still Waters Distillery in Concord, Ontario, Canada. In the early 2000s, founders Barry Steen and Barry Bernstein, and believe it or not their middle names are also Michael, noticed the growing number of micro distilleries opening in the USA and decided to combine their entrepreneurial experience and a love of whiskey to open their own Canadian distillery in 2009, the first in the region. They ordered custom-made copper stills from Germany, one pot still, two column stills, and had them shipped over in multiple parts, and then put them back together in a fashion to, as Barry Stein is quoted as saying, a massive IKEA project. The pair concentrated on producing vodka from malted barley for the first few months, giving them time to perfect their distilling methods and also provide an instant revenue stream, before laying down spirit in ex bourbon casks to mature at the end of 2009. At the time of recording, their range includes a single malt whiskey, a 100% rye whiskey, and two blends, red and blue. Such is the success of their venture, Still Waters was named Craft Producer of the Year in the Whiskey Magazine Icons of Whiskey Awards in 2016. So, let's see what it tastes like. So this is the Stork and Barrel Blue Blend, or Blue Label as it's called in some places. They actually have two blends. Uh, they have Red Blend, or Red Label, and Blue Blend, or Blue Label. Now. Um, the blue blend, which is this one, is actually the entry level. So if you think of Johnny Walker, it's kind of the opposite. Whereas blue label for Johnny Walker is the top end, mega expensive, and red label is the basic budget one, it's actually the other way around with still waters. So the blue blend you are looking at, do do do, twenty six ninety five in both uh, the Whiskey Exchange and also Amazon, believe it or not. Um, the red label, however, uh, is a little bit more expensive. You're looking at about twenty nine ninety five, uh, which is actually still a pretty decent price for a Canadian whiskey generally. Um, the uh, the blends on both of them are um, a combination, so it's some of Stillwater's own whiskey, um, so it's their own single malt and some of their rye whiskey. But there's also corn that's used in the blend, which they are sourcing from other distilleries in Canada. Um, the uh, blue blend, this one, uh, is bottled at forty percent, uh, and the red is bottled at 43 so slightly higher ABV as well um, as I said earlier I really like Canadian whiskey um, so I'm quite looking forward to this uh, Canadian whiskey gets a bit of a bad reputation I think mainly because of Canadian Club um, but there are some absolute crackers out there and they really are worth searching out uh, if you want to go back through some of my other um, videos of Canadian whiskey I think I did a batch of, of a few of them kind of side by side there are a few Canadians that really stand out um, so let's see how this goes as well. But I actually, I'm quite looking forward to this because I think this is a really, really good price for not an unusual whiskey, but just something that's a little bit different. So color wise, let's get my sheet up again and let's put that there. Let's see if we can get me on the light. So quite pale actually. Um, on screen, it's looking a little bit yellower than it is in the flesh, but it's still quite a pale color. Um, not too dark now maturation I'm guessing is ex-bourbon in everything else as well um, but obviously with blends unless they're really specific about what's in it it's quite difficult to find out what the constituent parts are so I don't know what the um, percentage of single malt to rye to corn to everything else is in the blend if you do know if one of the two berries is actually watching this and can put a comment in and would actually be able to let me know what the blend constituents is that would be great I'm just going on what I can find on the internet which unfortunately is not that much so, oh, okay, so there's not a great deal on the nose on first sniff. Light, fresh, touch of citrus in there, but there's not a great deal. There's not a massive amount going on. No, not necessarily a bad thing. You don't really need a whiskey to be all nose and everything kind of going on. It's nice to have that, absolutely, but 
There's nothing offensive in here. There's just not a great deal. This could be a light, easy drinking whiskey. I'll find out, obviously, when I stick it in my golden swallow. But there's not a lot there. It's quite, it's light and fresh, but I can't even say zingy. There is citrus on there, but it's not particularly powerful citrus. It's more lingering in the background. Okay, let's give it a go. Now, 40%, so obviously the lower end of the ABV. Ooh, okay. So, initially, I was thinking, hmm, not a lot here. And it starts off quite, not thin, it starts off quite plain. There's not a huge amount. And I'm thinking, this is the same as the nose. There's not really a lot there. That citrusy background ether that's sort of there on the nose is there on the palate to start with. And then all of a sudden, this soft, creamy, and the best way I can describe this is lemon meringue without the pie. There is a sweet citrus element, which is quite lemony, but there is a creaminess, which is akin to meringue. It's, it's very soft and subtle. There's no bite. 40% I wouldn't expect a kick at the back of the throat, but there isn't a bite from what you would consider, say, the grain element, say the corn, the rye, if it was a high percentage of that in a blended whiskey. It's very, very light. There's not a huge amount on the finish, but what is there is a continuation of that lemon meringue. And it's in the middle of my mouth. There's nothing really at the back. There's nothing that's finishing lingering at the back of my throat as I'm swallowing. It's all in the center of my mouth. Really citrusy, really light, a bit more citrus now. Touch of lime, yeah, touch of lime in there. Lemon, lemon zest, fresh, light. This is actually, I'm enjoying this more and more the more I'm having it. I got more flavor from that second mouthful than the first. And it's light, it's fresh, it's summery. It really is a whiskey for drinking in the sun. I would put this in the fridge, I wouldn't put ice with it because I think ice, watering it down, is just going to kill it. You've got water in there that is just going to um, dilute it too much and you'll you'll lose what flavour there is there because this is a really delicate whiskey. But I actually like this a lot. Mm. This is so easy drinking. So easy drinking. Orange is coming through now as well really orange almost Cointreau sweetness in there and I love Cointreau that was the one thing at my parents liquor cabinet when I was about 8, 9, 10 that I used to snaffle all the time but there is a Cointreau feel to it that kind of orange sweet not sweet liqueur but that orange sweetness and lemon and meringue it's light, there's nothing, there really is nothing on the throat. This is all in the mouth. The finish that's there is the flavors lingering in the center of your mouth. There's, there's nothing coming back up, it sounds awful, but there is nothing kind of that's, that's coming back and developing. What there is is really pleasant. I think this is gonna to be too light for some people. I think people will try this and go, well, it's got nothing to it. It does, it doesn't have a lot, but what it does have is actually very, very pleasant. And I would say, as a summer whiskey, I think outside in the garden, on a summer's evening, really nice and warm weather. Now it's not, I'm in my garage at the moment, and it is not warm, it's a little bit chilly, and it's almost the perfect temperature for this whiskey. I would have the bottle in the fridge, I would not put ice in it, I would not put cold water in it, I would pour a bottle from the fridge and have it as a shot. This might work uh, in cocktails as well, my fear is that the flavor profile is maybe a little bit too light and it's going to get overpowered by mixers um like soda water i'm not a fan of soda water and whiskey anyway but you know lemonade lemonade will be too sweet for this it, you're not going to get the, the whiskey element of it you're not going to get the, the citrusy flavor profile that the whiskey is giving you because lemonade will probably just overpower it but if you can get a really light mixer like a light soda water or a light lemonade that uh, isn't overpowering and overly sweet. It would actually work really well. So this may well work in cocktails. I'd be interested to see if, if this 
did work in something else that was more of a straight cocktail where you had more whiskey as well as other flavors that were supporting it but i love the flavor profile i think it's fantastic and i, I think to be honest for like 27 quid on amazon uh, and the whiskey exchange i think that's actually a damn good price for something unusual you know you're not going to find everywhere um, it's another good Canadian whiskey. Um, I'd love to try the single malt. I'd love to see what that's like. In fact, I'm very tempted to, to go and try the others. Now, I'm hopefully, depending on what happens with the rest of the world, going to be going to America uh, later on this year. Um, and I will be keeping an eye out for Stalk and Barrel uh, and picking up a bottle of basically whatever they have. Because based on this, which is presumably their, they are marketing as their entry level, you know, this is the basic one. You've then got the red blend. You've then got the 100% rye and the single malt. If this is their introduction to what Stillwater's distillery can produce, it's a bloody good introduction. I really, really like this. Mm. Love it. Fresh. The zinginess is there now, but it's that sweetness as well. But it's a lovely, subtle sweetness. Like I say, meringue, that kind of light sweetness. Orange, lemon, tiny little bit of lime. Oh, it's really good really really good and I like that a lot very very easy drinking that is what blended whiskey should be doing giving you something that's enjoyable that's easy to drink that is not costing the earth but is just something that you can drink and enjoy and and be doing other things you're not having to fight it or work with it or give it 20 minutes before you're getting the best of it or anything like that just get it in your glass sit outside in the sun and just relax and drink something very very pleasant indeed so cracking work by the two barrows there i am super impressed so that is me done uh, and i shall see you at the next one cheers